Promi Evnet. Bro, that's a mango. What do you mean? That is not a banana. Please just, please just give me a banana, man. <laughs> what? Claude 3.5 Sonnet is actually amazing. Well, not for the reason of drawing mangoes as bananas, but definitely for what people have been using online. And have you seen how good those demos are? Black hole and wormhole particle animation? Checked. 3D survival ship bias simulation? Checked. A star search map visualization? Checked. Runescape? Checked. Some crazy obscure animations? Checked. Oh wait, the code was stolen for this one. But for a second, I thought I was watching the demos at ChatGPT Dev Day like they are just too good to be true. Yet these people are able to use this tool to make some mind-blowing things right now. Just don't know how much of the codes are actually uniquely synthesized by Claude after that animation instant. And of course, this is what I get when I try to use it myself. Maybe there's a massive skill issue we're having here. Just like today's sponsor, that lets you manage multiple types of AIs easily, this innovative platform called AIML API offers you access to over 100 AI models, and the amount of models they offer might as well be a skill issue compared to other API providers. It is a platform for developers and startups looking for quality and cost-effective AI solutions without having API costs burning a hole in your budget. Whether you need to integrate chat completion, image recognition, use embeddings, or even generate music and videos, this platform has you covered. With the additions of all versions of GPTs, Claude, Mixtral, Llama 3, Stable Diffusion, and many more models ready to go right out of the box, it is an ideal solution for businesses, startups, and innovation labs aiming to seamlessly integrate AI technologies into their applications via API. They also offer 24-7 customer support in Discord and organize community events such as AI hackathons with real prizes. From basic prototypes to advanced systems, AI ML API has solved the cost and scalability of AI infrastructure for you. You can get started now with a free plan using the link down in the description to take your projects to the next level with the best AI models. And thank you AI ML API for sponsoring this video. Anyways, okay, like I also tried to have Claude 3.5 draw me a unicorn, but it gave me some Dark Soul type of boss instead. But I mean, I guess at least it's not memorizing that one ASCII unicorn, right? And out of all these crazy applications, what surprised me the most is that they let everyone use it completely completely for free. So instead of paywalling functions or models, Anthropic allows everyone to access their latest model, which is Sonnet 3.5. It is an upgrade of a model announced back in Claude 3, and just look at how big of a performance jump it had in its 3.5 version. It also beat their largest model, Claude 3 Opus, so maybe we can potentially expect Claude 3.5 Opus to be even crazier in terms of capabilities, and maybe 3.5 Sonnet is just a taste of what is yet to come. While it is free for everyone, the catch now is that you only get to send a very limited amount of messages. But this does give people a chance to test your latest model, and in the current state of AI, this is definitely the superior marketing technique to convert free customers to paid ones. Like I was completely sold when I tested out their newest function called Artifacts. It is basically a window that will display on the right of the generations and run whatever codes Claude generates. Well, more specifically, only a few languages, but the window is also interactive, which means that you can enter keystrokes and mouse clicks. ChatGPT doesn't have this by the way. Okay for example, I asked it to basically generate a game like Subway Surfer and without actually explicitly mentioning the phrase Subway Surfer, it pretty much made the most basic mechanics on the first try, just with a few bugs. Other than uh, the obstacle appearing in the complete opposite direction, the main bug was that when I tried to jump over the obstacle, it will be viewed as a collision, hence the game would just reset. Without looking through the code, I tried two times describing the potential problem that the code is having where if the playable character jumps, it'll still hit the obstacle. Initially, this did not work, but it did make the obstacles appear from top to bottom. Then when I asked it to outline what could have caused this and how can this be solved, it still didn't work, but it did now describe the issue fully. Then after telling it to try again, Claude actually got it. It implemented a state called is jumping and fixed the collision. And by the way, these were all done within the span of five minutes, which is pretty fast. Also, the reason I chose this custom game was to avoid any
any existing codes online that Sonic could have just memorized, like Tetris or the Snake game. And it is not a coincidence that 3.5 Sonic is so good at coding. Since Claw 3 came out a few months ago, with the crazy long context length they provide, and how well it performs on the needle in the haystack test, it has been my top choice, and many others too, for assisting in writing codes. You can shove in your whole code base and just get reasonable suggestions too. I tried giving Claw 3 Opus some more coding problems that I was working on after my video on Claw 3. Ranging from Python to assembly, it could actually understand what codes I was writing, and those codes it generates actually work. So they must have trained Sonnet similarly, and the combination of artifacts with its coding capabilities really just shined through with Sonnet 3.5. ChatGPT on the other hand did fumble pretty hard, and when you message over a certain amount of conversation, it just starts forgetting things. I didn't use the API because I was lazy, but I mean I didn't use Claude's API either, but that's what they provide on their website, so naturally I just feel like it's a better comparison. And what's even more frustrating is that coding executions on ChatGPT isn't really a quality of life function if the code it generates never works in the first place, and even after a few times, when it fails, it just stops trying. So whatever Anthropic has been cooking with Claude is definitely on point, and with Claude 3.5 Sonnet now being able to execute code itself, I too lost another reason for using ChatGPT. If Claude's artifact supports LaTeX rendering, I think the entire research and dev community will actually jump ship over too. And if we look at the benchmark numbers, this medium-sized model has beaten their own previous flagship model, which is Claude 3 Opus, across the board, so basically smaller and better, and faster and cheaper. With GPT-40 slightly winning in the math solving department, Sonnet has completely dominated the whole LLM landscape, also in terms of performance, cost, and cost effectiveness. Remember, it's 200k context length. On LMSYS Arena, while it does come in second behind GPT-40 in the overall leaderboard, it still topped the ladder on the coding category and outperformed GPT-40. But if you don't trust Chat Arena anymore though, on a new private leaderboard called Seal, published by Scale AI, it is now number one in pure instruction following, but interestingly, fell short in preference ranking. One of the speculated reasons is that it is bad at formatting, like providing visual presentation and readability of its responses, so maybe Claude 3.5 Sonnet retained this strong instruction following but weak one-shot characteristics from Claude 3, and probably has to do with how they have done their instruction tuning. The sudden jump in model capability from Anthropic has also been speculated in the potential application of their latest mechanistic interpretability research. I made a video about it, you can check it out. People speculated this probably because Anthropic did the interpretability experiment on a Sonnet model, then now they release a Sonnet model that improves so much, especially on coding, do link to one of the experiment results they have shown in that research. I don't know if that's true, so take it with a grain of salt. Anyways, with these new model launches, the praises are usually high across the board, but the downsides are still worth mentioning too, and of course, some reality checks are needed. Visual and abstract concepts are so difficult for the model, as you can see here, it is unable to draw basic images using codes, more specifically, I'm talking about how it generates images using SVG code. Maybe the connection between the domains of code drawing and the resulting image are still lacking, but of course it's still not comparable with actual image generations. Long context reasoning is still far from perfect, and according to this paper, no other models including Sonnet 3.5 are able to achieve this still. So yes, generalization in reasoning is hard. We don't completely know if the model is fully multi-model either, and I feel like the visual understanding or the ability to create visual assets is not as on point either, even though it can give you some reasonable responses when you input an image. Fun fact, ChatGPT's image generation function is using Dolly 3, which is an API. This doesn't mean Claude 3.5 is bad at SVG, but actually, I think it's very fluent at it. It's just bad at drawing complex shapes like bananas, for example. It probably was never trained on an SVG banana to begin with, so maybe that's why it failed my initial test, and I didn't guide it harder to make it do it right. Another major downside is the message limit is still very easy to hit, even after you pay the 20 bucks subscription. On top of that, they have a very interesting policy where the API prevents individual use. I don't know if I'm reading this right, but this could mean if you hit the limit, you can't go over to use the API for individual use. But anyways, let's talk about another function they released a few days ago after Sonnet 3.5 called Projects. This function is only available through Claude Pro and Team Plan, and you can now make chats into shareable projects basically. This function lets you upload a set of documents to Sonnet 3.5 and add people to your project to chat with those
those documents with a total of 200k context window. You can also set custom instructions within each project to specify how it responds. And you can basically choose to share a specific snapshot of a conversation from Claude into a shared project feed, which is pretty neat. Maybe I'll forcefully integrate this into my workflow and share with you guys later on and see how well it works for me practically. And before we end this video, let me just show you another interesting use case this guy came up with. Given a CSV or a table, he was able to get Claude to help him make a dashboard for his startup's finance, like adding sensitivity analysis of key assumptions, running it as a Monte Carlo simulation, and assuming a normal distribution all worked first try. So I decided to make the same thing too with my YouTube's finance. First try, it failed pretty badly as it didn't realize that there were three currencies until I mentioned it. So I was nearly a millionaire, but unfortunately I am not as I do not have a Bugatti on my balance sheet yet. But after prompting it three times, along with the latest conversion rates, the graphics it gave me looks pretty good. It has pie charts to indicate my earnings, and it also made me a spending distribution even though I labeled my spendings terribly. It also made me a monthly analysis on my income versus expenses with me just asking it to show my remaining balance. The numbers are completely wrong though. If only I do have 50k, but reality is often disappointing. It might have added an extra zero times two, but I'll give it a benefit of doubt because my CSV is really badly formatted and it has data over four years with like around 500 entries. So maybe this is a hard data for Sonnet to organize to begin with, as language models are usually pretty bad at counting. <laughs> Get it? But anyways, if you want to keep up with the latest AI research, definitely check out my newsletter where I publish research breakdowns on many cool papers that I don't have time to make videos for. A big shout out to Andrew Lascellias, Chris Ledoux, Alex J, Deegan, Alex Marie's, Migulim, Fafau, Robert Zaviasa, and many others that support me through Patreon or YouTube. Follow my Twitter if you haven't, and I'll see y'all in the next one.